guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may always win the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Aeon nods. S say, goodbye to a healthy male birth rate. That's crazy. Where did it come from? Who knows? I've been trying to figure out that, out that for decades I have. I have. N nothing. Do you know anything about the Cascade? I'm afraid not, boy. Afraid not. The mole lays several small strips of paper out on the shelf. He carefully adds a drop of my blood to each one. I watch him curiously, trying to make sense of this peculiar mole. He's quite something. Lilkin mentioned you were an Automuk once. What are they like? Ha! Not much to tell about them. Cultists in robes of dust. They believe technology is sacred and hoard the old knowledge for themselves. Ah, the Adeptus Mechanicum is at that work again. <laughs> he makes an exaggerated shake of his head. Nonsense, nonsense. Ironic, though, eh? Science and spirituality coming together like that. Aeon bumbles back across the room to fumble through some more containers. What's someone to blame for the death of progress in these times? Blame the Autumn Monks. Who do they trust to maintain their sacred technology? Only themselves. Only themselves. Leave the primitive clans ignorant. They say and keep the knowledge for themselves. Seems like corruption is still alive and well in Elayla. Is that why you left them? Aeon shrugs. He's only half paying attention to me. I watch him fumble with various chemicals and bright and beakers as he bent as he blends my blood into all sorts of mixtures. Ah, a bit of a technicality, that. Never pro never properly joined them. Now you tell me something, omnivore? Huh? You, humans, omnivores? Yeah, oh, yeah. Thought as much. Thought as much. And the tailbone? What's that about? Is it cut off at birth? Or of a coming-of-age ritual, yes? No, we just don't have tails. Bah, here goes my theory. He makes a casual gesture towards the human skulls he has sitting in one of his containers. I wince. Not much to be gathered from them. How long have humans been extinct, exactly? Aeon blows a raspberry with his cheeks, giving me a half-hearted shrug. Four or five hundred years? Give or take a century or two. Nobody knows. Nobody. Human remains are near impossible to come by. Would you permit me a few more tests? I just want to see what I can make of you. Sure, that's why I'm here. Grand, grand. First to need a little hair off that head of yours. Over the next two hours or two, Aeon conducts a number of tests on me. They weren't invasive, and he frequently mentioned how limited he was by his primitive equipment, but he, some, but he seems to know what he's talking about. I haven't worked up the courage to tell him anything more about my condition yet. Positive! So I'm infected. You're infected. The affliction has you. you see the pale color in your test strip? For anyone else, it'd be deep, deep, deep green. What does that mean, you ask? It means you're very early incubation. You were infected recently. If I had to guess how long, I'd say about two days. Spot on. That's how long I've been awake. I probably caught it from Loken. There's any cure? Alex, everyone here is infected. Everyone. It's hereditary. The only way to escape an infection is to have been born, e born before it even existed and sealed in a tomb until now. So the suspended animation theory is looking likely. Exactly. That means you, dear Alex, are at, are at least 500 years old. Perhaps even up to 1,000. Tell me, tell me, Alex, did the Zephyr have the technology to induce suspended animation? I'm not sure. My knowledge of them is, uh, it's hard to describe. None of this explains why Bite is in my head. The most important thing, Alex, is that I've no reason to think you're anything other than human, even if I can't tell where you came from. That ought to satisfy Dravonia. I twist my mouth uncertainly. I've gotten more answers from him in an hour than anyone else has in two days. He hasn't once treated me with fear or disrespect. Aeon is completely unpretentious. He's been nothing but kind to me. He's fiercely intelligent and very wise. He isn't bound to the level of ignorance the rest of the tribe seems to be. I don't think I'm going to get a better opportunity than this. If I want some real answers, I'm going to have to give, I'm going to have to give him something. Um, what if, uh, what if there was something I haven't said? I, I don't think it'll come, come up on those tests. Oh? Javonia wasn't really suspicious of me, so I've sort of kept this a secret, even from Loken. I just... I can't explain it myself, and I'm not sure how they'll react. I was planning on asking you, but... Ah, personal, is it? Not exactly. Something's wrong with me. Eh? What is it? Rash? No, it's... Infection? No. Ah, allergic reaction to canine hair. No, Aeon, it's... I... Look, just promise me you won't freak out. <sniffs> Alex, please, I've heard it all. You can't freak me out. I bet I can. Well, the thing is, um... Uh, where, wow, where do I begin? 
Can you check inside my head? Like, do I have anything there that shouldn't be? Even through his goggles, like I feel Aeon stare. He crosses his arms, his mouth thinning at me. And why would I need to do that, Alex? Just what are you expecting me to find in that skull of yours? I'm, I'm only realizing now how absurd it must sound without telling him about Bite. That still feels like a step too far. Because I am... I think there's a chance I'm not actually human. Or at least, if I am, I'm a really fucked up one. There are things I can do that humans can't. I can move in ways I didn't think I could. I don't need to breathe or eat or eat anything. I, I know things that I shouldn't. Aeon frowns curiously at me. Sounds like you have some odd qualities. Given the circumstances of your arrival, I suspected something might not be quite right. You did? Well, shouldn't I have? I mean, a living human? That's impossible. None of this was going to be straightforward. You say you can't eat. What was your last meal? I shrug. When was your last meal? As far as I know, I've never eaten anything in my life. And you said you can't breathe. I know I can, but I don't have to. I can hold my breath indefinitely. I know it seems crazy, but, well, watch. I point to my mouth and stop breathing. Aeon's eyes narrow, but he eventually catches on to what I'm doing and watches curiously. After a minute of silence, the mole, the mole takes my hand and again and takes my pulse a second time while I continue to hold my breath. At least three minutes pass, and Aeon is looking increasingly, increasingly confounded. Still got a steady heartbeat. Peculiar. Alarming. And peculiar. So you see what I mean? I'm clearly not normal, right? Interesting. Interesting. So what functions do you still have? Sleep? Drink? I still sleep. I haven't had to, I haven't had to drink much. How's your mind? Do you feel your emotions are in working order? I'd say so. I've been feeling anxious. Hmm, understandable. Understandable. Do you have a sexual drive? My mind immediately jumps to images of Loken and my face reddens. I'll take that scowl as a yes. Am I really that easy to read? So, um, do you know what might be wrong with me? Hmm, couldn't say, couldn't say. Everything about you is perfectly normal, on the outside at least. Inside, who knows? All these traits leave me pondering, pondering, pondering. What does your stomach look like? Your lungs? How are they functioning? How is any of this possible? I think I have a computer chip inside my brain. The mole looks at me as though I've gone totally mad. Computer chip? Oh, Alex, you're getting into old knowledge that only the Autumnks could possibly comprehend. The breathing, the eating, a computer chip wouldn't explain all that away. Computers weren't magical. Do you know how much that, do you know much about computers or AI? AI? Oh, you mean the ancient Zephyr machine intelligence? I'm afraid not, afraid not. In any case, I don't have the means to look in your head. Not without a very, very sharp knife. I'd rather you didn't lobotomize me, to be honest. Yes, yes, me too. Not ideal, not ideal. Any chance of getting to this pod you were found in? Look and said Devil's Crag is swarming with demons now. It'll be a while before it's safe again. Could the Autumnks help us? Aeon barks a sudden expulsion of laughter at me. Really, now? Why would they want to help you, Alex? Why wouldn't they? No, no, why would they? I cross my arms indignantly. They revere Zephyr technology. I'm a living Zephyr. The mole shakes his head sadly. Not quite. They don't revere technology. They revere knowledge. Without any memory, you've none to offer to them. You've none to offer them. So what? That's it? No one can help me? I just don't know what to suggest, Alex. Your issues aren't exactly normal. No way. No way. I don't know anything about your condition. I never heard anything like it. Damn it, I just want this mystery to end. The bullying frustration is starting to get to me. Where do I go from here? Aeon, Aeon was my only shot, now I'm back at square one. Not wishing to say something I'll regret, I direct my annoyance into a growl of anguish. Oh, don't you start growling at me now, mister. Oh, don't you start growling at me now, mister. Sorry, sorry, that wasn't at you, I just... This whole thing is so messed up. I take a deep breath. Aeon pouts thoughtfully. Hmm, growling, huh? Yeah, you guys in the comments get real fucking thirsty when I start growling. <laughs> you know, the Autumnks do have a particular machine. It can take pictures of your insides. My head pricks up. Eyes widen with interest. Like an x-ray machine? And if your condition could be identified, they would be the ones to do it. If they couldn't, that in itself would be alarming. They know everything. But I don't think that. I don't think asking the auto monks for help is a good idea, Alex. They're the most powerful people in Elayla. They are. They are. How? Are they the greatest war? Are they great warriors or something? Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. Pacifists. But, Alex, the auto monks have monopolized all progress. People will tell you technology is dead. It isn't. It's laying out there in the black zones. Much of it is still functional. Any black runner will tell you that. No, no. Technology is alive and well. But knowledge? It's dead. All the technology is useless when nobody, when nobody knows how to use it. Invention is gone, Alex. You want plumbing for your clan? Freezers to preserve your food. Electricity. You go to the auto monks. They hold all the knowledge, and it's not for sharing. In return, they have anything you owe. They can have anything they want. Protection, salvage, weapons, supplies. They, they control progress, Alex. They pull the strings. 
In spite of the corruption described by the Automunks, I stand firm. If they can help me, I'll take the risk. I'll make a deal with them, whatever it takes. Alex, I'm not sure. I need to know what's wrong with me. What if it's important? You could you could help. Surely they'd listen to you. You used to be one of them. Aeon scratches his chin with one of his long claws, his face flat. I'll admit, I'm pretty darn curious about your condition myself. About this. Tomorrow morning, you and I visit the Great Barrier. I'll ask them to give you an audience. Okay, great. But you will have to let me handle them. I make no promises that they'll agree to see you. I'll meet you at Loken's Lodge. We'll go together, yes? All right, tomorrow morning. We'll get to the bottom of this mystery. Yep, yes indeed. But now, if you'll excuse me, Alex, I'll have to ask you to leave. I promised Devonia I'd meet with her. You're, um, you're not going to tell her about... No, 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 I'll say nothing, nothing. Not for the moment. I'll tell her you're perfectly human, since I've no proof otherwise, and that's that. But Alex, you must tell Loken. Today, you must, you must. The Hound does not like being lied to. There's responsibility. He needs to know about this. He does, he does, he does. I'm not sure that's a good idea. He, he won't understand. The sharp dog he is, and he could do with he could do with his help. We could do with his help tomorrow. The autumn monks usually prefer to deal with black runners. In any case, I'll go and meet with Dravonia right now. Now, with a sense of new purpose, I hop up to my feet. Thanks, Aeon, for everything. I really don't know how I got here, but huh, say no more. We'll figure it out. I'll see you in the morning, Alex. Aeon ushers me towards the door. I say my final goodbyes before leaving his laboratory. It's late afternoon. The daytime sun is beginning its early, its early descent into the horizon. Well, that could have gone better. It could have gone worse. Perhaps you should think about telling Loken now. I, uh, I don't know. Just say the same thing you told Aeon. He doesn't need to know about me. I'll see what happens. Well, we got some answers today, at least. It still feels like we're chasing one tail after another. <sighs> what else do you propose? The other lead is checking the pod Loken found us in, and that's not an option right now. With a breath to steady my nerves, I set off into I set off into the village to find Loken. It doesn't take me long to spot his gigantic frame. I see him at the village square, marching towards me. He has a small package in his paw, wrapped up in a gray cloth. Alex! I have to wave to him. I wave to him as he jogs over. Ah, I was just coming to find you. You have learned things. Uh, sort of. I shrug. You proved that I'm not from here. Like, I'm like 500 years old at least. Probably more. Hmm, you are the last Zephyr. He doesn't seem surprised by this. I figured he already suspected as much. To be honest, so did I. Look, Anne and I, I, Anne and I have a plan. We... Wait, I... Hmm. What is it? He's wearing an odd, an odd expression. He wants to tell me something, but he's too nervous. Loken? I have... His ears flatten. His eyes flick to the side. What's got him so worked up? Are you okay? Yes. I have something for you. Oh, thank you. I assume he's talking about the package in his paw. He doesn't give it to me yet. What is it? Hmm? Oh! The husky jolts to his senses and holds the package out for me. It is a gift. A what? My cheeks have flushed bright red. I'm just staring at the package he's holding out for me, dumbfounded. What? For me? From you? Hmm. Take it. I'm flattered, but completely bewildered by the unexpected gesture. I take the package from him stiffly. It's a lovely gesture, but it feels very forced? And natural, even? I'm not sure what his motivation is here. Nevertheless, I give him a smile and go along with it. Thank you! I carefully open the cloth to let the, and let the gift fall into my palm. It looks like a necklace. Hanging from the end of the chain is a small golden bullet for a pistol of some kind. It is an amulet. A bullet? Oh, it's a bullet chain! It is. I found the parts in my salvage box. You made this just now? Hmm. It's such a random token. I appreciate it completely, but why did he do this? This is really nice. Loken. Thanks, Loken. He manages a small smile. I give him one in return to show my gratitude. What made you decide to get me this? His ears flatten and he looks away shamefully. It is an apology. An apology for what? Hurting you. Huh? When? When I grabbed you, I hurt you. Wait, that's what he's apologizing for? Is it because I asked him for the more Dawn Lily? I'd only said that I'd give myself uh, I'd only said that to give myself some time alone with Aeon. Loken! He looks at me, his face flat with shame. You don't have to apologize for that. It was an accident. It's nothing. He still avoids my eye. It is not nothing. I did not mean it. I know you didn't. You... Hey! I give him a pat on the arm. He seems to respond well to being touched earlier. Sure enough, as my hand makes contact with his fur, his tail bounces as his ears flick up. He looks down at me. I already forgave you. I know you didn't mean it. You don't... You didn't even really hurt me. 
It's probably just because the Donnelly wore off. I should have been more careful. You are mine. I frowned at him. You keep saying that. What does it mean? I'm not your property. That is not what it means. I'm responsible for you. You are my acolyte. Is that really all it is? I suspect there's more to it. I'm starting to, I'm starting to tune into his dominant behaviors. Some are quite subtle. Others are more blatant. Perhaps it's just a canine thing, as Aeon suggested. I suspect the reason is far more human. Well, it's okay. I forgive you. I, I promise. Maybe he'll appreciate it if I just change the, to change the topic. Did you get to see your class again? I did. I've also been to the Shaman. She has given me a healing poultice for your cut. We'll return to my lodge and apply it. Okay, I'll tell you what happened with Aeon when we get there. He's looking at me very closely. I'm a bit confused by his intense stare. Then I spot his eyes flick down for a heartbeat to the necklace in my hand. I promptly put the thin chain around my head. He seems to relax after that. Thanks, Logan. I, I love it. Hmm. Come. He turns his back to me and begins to walk off. I follow, trying to keep pace with his larger strides. Trying to keep pace with his larger strides. Hey, Logan. Hmm. Why are you so possessive of me? Is it um something that hounds do, or? He eyes me up as we walk. As we walk, his mouth twisted in anguish. Once again, I can tell he's having trouble saying what he wants to say. I do not want to lose another acolyte. Hey, I'm tougher than I look. Okay, I'm not. A, I'm not about to let any demons kill me. That will not happen. You will be a good black runner. I do not want you to leave. Why would I leave? It has happened before. Ah, I remember. He mentioned that his other acolyte left to be trained by someone else. I know that it isn't the root to his insecurity, but it probably but it probably hurt him pretty bad. Well, I'm not going anywhere. How come your previous acolyte left? She. Hmm. He doesn't answer. He just looks sad. I have a theory. Was she close to you? Mm-hmm. Like, really close? Yes. Like, really, really close? Yes, she was good. Doesn't quite get what I'm hinting at. I mean, were you more than friends? Were you together? Explain. As lovers or something? We were not lovers. I figure from his candidness that he's telling the truth. So much for my theory. Ah, okay, I just wondered is all. She did not like me. Did something happen? No, she simply did not like me. I didn't, you didn't do anything to make her think like- You didn't do anything to make her think like that? No, she did not like me. That is all. She did not like how he spoke to her. She thought I was slow-witted and a bad mentor, so she left. What a bitch! His crystal eyes stab at me furiously, as I've just insulted his own mother. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean it that in a bad way. I only meant that she sounds unkind. Oaken's brow raises. Oh, wait, bitch means female dog, right? Sorry, hound! I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, that was silly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. I'm thinking of doing some giveaways on this channel for some uh, games that I have that uh, I just well, would rather, I just don't care anything about that I'd rather give to my audience. I'm thinking of doing the giveaways like on Twitter or something. I'm thinking of the only thing I'm asking for is that, hey, uh, uh, tell people about the channel, you know, get more people watching. Or just like, uh, say a certain comment and I'll pick from a random number generator, stuff like that. Just uh, let let me guy let me know what you how you what you guys think I should do in the comments. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.